Hi, my name is Liz with SilverSupplies.com. Today we're going to be going over how to use the Pepe Jump Ring Maker with the Fordham 2230 Flex Shaft Series Flex Shaft. The first thing we're going to go over is what's included in the kit. You get the hand winder, an array of mandrels, 2.5 millimeters to 12 millimeters inner diameter. You get the number 30 handpiece holder for the blade and you get the base cutter right here. Okay. And the first thing we have to do is decide what type of jump rings we want to make. For me, I prefer to use 8 millimeter. It's a very common size. So I pull out my 8 millimeter diameter mandrel. I'm also going to be using 18 gauge brass wire for the demonstration. Um, it's a very common jump ring size used in chain mail. To determine your gauge wire at home, if you don't know what size it is, you use a wire gauge as such. I'm measuring up to 18 gauge. It slides right in the slot, verifying that, that is the size it is. You don't want it to wiggle and slide in tightly. I'm now going to take my mandrel and put it into my hand winder. This part adjusts backwards and forwards to open up the mouth of the jump ring maker. Slides right in there. Now when I put this in there, each mandrel has a little hole in it. That's where the wire is going to go into. So it's important to get a firm grip of your mandrel into the hand winder, but leave that hole outside so you're able to put your metal into it, your metal wire into it. So I'm going to adjust this nice and now tight. Now I've inserted my wire into the hole. I leave maybe an eighth of an inch out, just a little bit. With my left hand, I'm pulling down slightly on the wire to give it some tautness. With my, excuse me, with my left hand, I'm doing that. With my right hand, I start swirling the hand winder. And I'm going to continue in this motion, applying a little bit of pressure with my left hand until I get about three inches of jump rings or of coil. You can speed up a little bit once you get the feel of it. Each gauge wire that you use and each um, millimeter size mandrel will give you a different amount of jump rings per ounce. We do have a chart at the store so if you have any questions you can give us a call at 1-800-882-8750 and we can help you out with how many ounces you'll need for your project. Okay, I have maybe two and a half inches. I want a little bit more and that is perfect. I'm going to take my oblique cutter, cut off my wire from the spool, set that aside, release my mandrel, Now right here, the wire is still stuck into that hole, so I want to come up and just give it a little snip and pull my spiral off of my 8mm mandrel. Put that back into place. Let me move this over. Okay, so on the base cutter has two screws that come off. This lifts up all the way. There's a stop on the left hand side of the jump ring maker. I want my coil to line up against that stop. This is important for safety. If it's over here, your blade is going to get caught and your jump rings are going to fly off. So make sure you have it all the way over to the stop. I set that back down. I apply cut lube, which also comes in the kit. I want to apply a generous amount to the very top of my jump rings. Whenever you do metal to metal, you need a lubricant with it. This acts as your lubricant. Get all the way over. Okay. Make sure that the area with the cut lube is raised up. Take the top plate, lay it down. It comes with a little bit of resistance springs. That's going to help you adjust your tension. So reapply each nut. Now as I'm doing this, I'm not applying a whole lot of force. I want there to be a little bit of a resistance, not too much, trying to get an even tautness on either side. 
Okay, the next step is actually attaching the hand piece to the number, or the hand um, piece to the number 30 hand piece. This slides in, and you want to pull it all the way through. You take your jump ring blade attached to the mandrel, slide it in. Very carefully, without cutting yourself, hold on to one side of it, line up the chuck key hole, and tighten it in there. When you're tightening it, it's important to make sure that you get a nice, firm grip on it. Okay. Now the next step can be a little bit tricky. As you can see, each of the handles comes with a little line on it. That's called a guide. That's going to tell you where to set your blade so when you put it down on your base, you get a clean cut. The guide is just like it says a guide. You do have to adjust it each time you use your jump ring maker. On the back are two set screws. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and get the guide in place and tighten the set screws. So the first thing I do is line it up, which you can't see, but I need to be able to see it. Take your screwdriver. Just give it a little bit of a turn. It has two set screws. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lay this on top of here. With my side view, I need to make sure that the blade is going exactly in between this slit. It's about a 1.5 millimeter opening. Right now, my blade is a little bit too close to me, so I have to adjust it. This minor adjustment is key in cutting your jump rings because what happens if it's not perfect, your jump rings, the blade touches the side of the base. You'll hear a hissing sound, kind of like a metal to metal whining. Stop, release your foot pedal, and realign your blade. Now that the handpiece with the blade is aligned, I just triple check it, make sure it's down there. Make sure my spiral of coils is all the way down to the stop point. Very important, put on your safety glasses. I'm going to turn this at an angle so it's easier for me to control my handpiece. Some people like to place this on a table and do it. I prefer to keep it actually in the base. It acts as a little bit more support. I have my foot pedal on the ground. I'm going to lay this on here nice and firmly. I want to apply a long, even stroke, stopping, releasing my foot pedal. So I line it up, turn on my foot pedal. Okay, so I've released my foot pedal. It's now safe to lift up and remove my piece. On the Ford M2230, it has an off button. I'm going to turn it off at this point so there's no chance of me accidentally hitting the foot pedal while the blade is inside of the handpiece. This is the fun part. Pop this little guy open all the way. And you have jump rings. Each one has a nice clean cut to it. Now as you pull off your jump rings you will notice that there is a little bit of cut lube left on there. I like to take it with some soapy water, wash it off, dry it off, and I'm good to go. This jump ring has a nice clean opening ready to be soldered or used in chainmail.